Before the Ages of Man, written by A. Cantor of Shimmery. Before man came to rule Tamriel, and before the chronicles of the historians recorded the affairs of the rulers of Tamriel, the events of our world were known only through myth and legend, and through the divinely inspired teachings of the Nine Divines. For convenience, historians divide the distant ages of prehistory into two broad periods of time, the Dawn Era and the Merthic Era. The Dawn Era The Dawn Era is the period of time before the beginning of mortal time, when the fates of the gods take place. The Dawn Era ends with the exodus of the gods and magic from the world at the founding of the Adamantine Tower. The term Merithic comes from Nordic, literally Era of the Elves. The Merithic Era is the prehistoric time after the exodus of the gods and magic from the world at the founding of the Adamantine Tower and before the arrival of Yskrimor the Nord in Tamriel. The following are the most notable events of the Dawn Era, presented roughly in sequence as it must be understood by creatures of time such as ourselves. The cosmos formed from the Orbis, Chaos or Totality, by Anu and Padome. Akatosh, Oriel, formed and timed again. The gods, yet Ada, formed. Lorcan convinced or tricked the gods into creating the mortal plane, Nern. The mortal plane was at this point highly magical and dangerous. As the gods walked, the physical makeup of the mortal plane and even the timeless continuity of existence itself became unstable. When Magic, Magnus, architect of the plans for the mortal world, decided to terminate the project, the gods convened at the Adamantine Tower, Terrainy Tower, the oldest known structure in Tamriel, and decided what to do. Most lived when Magic did. Others sacrificed themselves into other forms so that they may stay, the Elnafe. Lorcan was condemned by the gods to exile in the mortal realms, and his heart was torn out and cast from the tower, where it landed a volcano form. With magic in the mythic sense gone, the cosmos stabilized. Elven history, finally linear, began, A.E. 2500. The Merithic Era the Merithic Era was figured by early Norse scholars as a series of years numbered in reverse order backward from their beginning of time, the founding of the Cameron Dynasty, recorded as year zero of the First Era. The prehistoric events of the Merithic Era are listed here with their traditional Nordic Merithic dates. The earliest Merithic date cited by King Harold scholars was in May 2500 the Nordic reckoning of the first year of time. As such, the Merthic era extends from ME 2500 in the distant past to ME 1, the year before the founding of the Cameron dynasty and the establishment of the White Gold Tower as an independent city-state. According to King Harold's bards, ME 2500 was the date of the construction of the Adamantine Tower on Belfira Island in High Rock the oldest known structure of Tamriel. This corresponds roughly to the earliest historical dates given in various unpublished elven chronicles. During the early Merthic era, the aboriginal beast peoples of Tamriel, the ancestors of the Khajiit, Argonian, Orkish, and other beast folk, lived in pre-literal communities throughout Tamriel. In the middle Merthic era, the Elvenary, mortals of elvish origin, Refugees fled to the doomed and now lost continent of Aldenaris, also known as El, also known as Old Elnafe, and settled in southwestern Tamriel. The first colonies were distributed at wide intervals on islands along the entire coast of Tamriel. Later inland settlements were founded primarily in fertile lowlands in southwest and central Tamriel. Wherever the beast folk encountered the elves, the sophisticated, literate, technologically advanced Elvenary cultures displaced the primitive beast folk into jungles, marshes, mountains, and wastelands. The Adamantine Tower was rediscovered and captured by the Dorini, a prominent and powerful Elvenary clan. 
The Crystal Tower was built on Somerset Isle and later the White Gold Tower in Surrey. During the Middle Meritic era, Aldmeri explorers mapped the coasts of Vardenfell, building the first era High Elven Wizard Towers at Ald Ridania, Belfell, Telarun, and Telmora in Morrowind. It was also during this period that Aeliad wild elven settlements flourished in the jungle surrounding the White Gold Tower, present-day Cerrado. Wild elves, also known as the Hearthland High Elves, preserved the Dawn-era magics and language of the Elna faith. Ostensibly a tribute land to the High King of Elenor, the Heartland's long lines of communication from the Somerset Isle's sovereignty effectively isolated Cerrado from the High Kings at Crystal Tower. The late Middle Merithic era is the period of High Velothi culture. The Chimer, ancestors of the modern Dunmer, or Dark Elves, were dynamic, ambitious, long-lived elven clans devoted to fundamentalist ancestor worship. The Chimer clans followed the prophet Veloth out of the ancestral elven homelands in the southwest to settle in the lands now known as Morrowind. Despising the secular culture and profane practices of the Dwemer, the Chimer also coveted the lands and resources of the Dwemer, and for centuries provoked them with minor raids and territorial disputes. The Dwemer, dwarves, free-thinking, reclusive elven clans devoted to the secrets of science, engineering, and alchemy, established underground cities and communities in the mountain range, later the Velothi Mountains separating modern Skyrim and Morrowind. The late Merithic era marks the precipitous decline of Velothi culture. Some Velothi settled in villages near declining and abandoned ancient Velothi towers. During this period, Velothi high culture disappeared on Vardenfell Island. The earliest Dwemer freehold colonies date from this period. Degenerate Velothi devolved into tribal cultures which, in time, evolved into the modern great houses of Morrowind, or persisted as barbarian Ashlander tribes. The only surviving traces of this tribal culture are scattered Velothi towers and Ashlander nomads on Vardenfell Island. The original first era high elven wizard towers along the coast of Tamriel were also abandoned about this time. It was in the late Merthic era that the pre-literate humans, the so-called needed peoples, from the continent of Atmora, also Altmora, or the Elderwood in Aldmeris, migrated and settled in northern Tamriel. The Nord culture hero Yskamor, leader of the great colonizing fleet Tamriel, is credited with developing a runic transcription of Norse speech based on elvish principles and so Yskrimor is considered the first human historian. Yskrimor's fleet landed at Hisarik Hit at the extreme northern tip of Skyrim's Broken Cape. The Nords built there the legendary city of Sarthal. The elves drove the men away during the Night of Tears, but Yskrimor soon returned with his 500 companions. Also, during the late Merthic era, the legendary immortal hero, warrior, sorcerer, and king, variously known as Pelham of Whitestrake, Harold Harrybriggs, Yzmir, Hans the Fox, etc., wandered Tamriel, gathering armies, conquering lands, ruling, and then abandoning his kingdoms to 